Hello and welcome to the Aquarium. Come in and take a seat, the show is about to begin. Although the remains of over 70 individual lead cichlids have been found, most of these have been fragmentary finds of partial skeletons. Most of the skeleton of lead cichlids was made up of cartilage, which doesn't fossilise well. The parts of the skeleton that were made up of ossified bone were often hollow and have since been crushed and flattened by the fossilisation process, making it extraordinarily difficult to identify them or determine their original form. The first Lee Sixthus remains were found during the 1880s in Peterborough, England, by farmer and amateur paleontologist Alfred Nicholson Leeds, after whom the genus was named Leeds Fish in 1889. At first, due to the fragmentary nature of the fossils, they were misidentified as stegosaur backplates. O.C. Marsh visited Leeds to view the specimens and concluded that the fossils were not stegosaur armour, but skull bones of a giant fish. The holotype specimen dated back 165 million years from the Middle Jurassic period and consists of over 1,000 fragments of bone. Working with bits and pieces of incomplete skeletons, scientists have had a hard time figuring out the precise dimensions of this enormous creature. Although almost certainly smaller than some early estimates that put it at over 30 metres, that's about 100 feet, it is still considered to be the biggest fish known. Current estimates put the typical body length of lead sickness at around 9 to 10 metres, that's about 30 to 33 feet, but some specimens have been estimated to reach lengths of up to 16 metres, about 52 feet. By looking at the structure of the bones, it is possible to estimate the age of the fish when they died. A study done in 2013 found that most specimens were between 17 and 31 years old, but one of the larger specimens was around 45 years old. The fossils indicate that the lead cichlids grew very fast for the first year or two of their lives, but there is no evidence that the, even the oldest fish had stopped growing, meaning there could be larger specimens still waiting to be found. Lead cichlids needed to quickly grow to such huge sizes as a defence mechanism against the large reptilian predators it shared the ocean with. One likely predator of lead cichlids would have been the Leopleurodon, which I covered in a previous episode. The reason why lead cichlids grew so large has puzzled researchers. Lee Cichlis was a suspension feeder, like modern whale sharks or basking sharks. It would have drifted through the water with its mouth wide open and used its special 40,000 teeth to filter out tiny organisms in the water. But Lee Cichlis was unusual due to its size. Never before had filter feeders grown so large. Clearly there was an explosion in plankton populations during the early Jurassic period which fueled the evolution of fish like Lead Sickthus and also it seems that this giant filter feeder went extinct when krill populations mysteriously plunged towards the end of the Cretaceous period. Well that's all I have for you this week. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. And I hope you'll join me next time for the final episode in this long-running series where we'll be taking a look at the Mosasaurus. And I'll see you then. Goodbye.